Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildly Garden. And in this video, I want to talk to you about a uh, particular message that I think is very important at this time of year. Now, firstly, I hope you guys are all well and I hope you are enjoying, well, this brief spell of sunshine that we've been having certainly here in the UK. It's nice. Temperatures are starting to rise. It's now about 10, 11 degrees. Uh, it's getting towards the end of February now. And um, of course, that means only one thing. It is soon to become the butterfly season, which is absolutely one of my favourite times of year, spotting the first butterflies of the year. Obviously, butterflies are a big passion of mine, if you haven't already gathered from the channel. And they are something that I have been interested in for a long, long time, just purely down to the incredible life cycle that these wonderful little insects have. And of course, the efforts they have to put in and the challenges that they face just to become this gorgeous little insect for sometimes what is only four days, certain species such as the Duke of Burgundy, our only metal mark here in the UK. It's a remarkable story really. And uh, there's, I don't think personally there's anything like it on earth that resembles um, or really sums up uh, the wonders of nature better than the life cycle of a butterfly. And of course, we've all read the Hungry Caterpillar book as kids, so we all know that uh, wonderful stage of, you know, egg, uh, caterpillar, chrysalis, and then the butterfly. So they are remarkable things. And of course, I will be bringing you guys many, many more videos on the different life cycles of some of the butterflies I find in the UK and some really special information coming up soon guys so uh, stay tuned to the channel I'll be bringing you certainly shall we say more winged varieties from further afield than the UK so uh, stay tuned for that one I've got some important updates coming for you all soon and um, yes today's episode off the back of that is now based on how you can help these brilliant insects at this time of year now in the UK there are two species predominantly, as so I say, the more common ones, uh, the peacock and the small tortoiseshell, which will actually overwinter as adult butterflies. You've also got the uh, brimstone as well, um, which is the real harbinger of spring, a cracking butterfly. They are these sort of sulfur lemon yellow butterflies that are one of the first to emerge. Um, usually sort of end of March time, although they have been seen uh, or they have been recorded pretty much every month of the year in the UK so you can see them in December, January on warm days. Um, but yes the small tortoiseshell and the peacock are two species that I want to talk to you specifically about and how you can help them at this time of year and that is to open your windows and your doors on your um, conservatories, uh, in your houses, I don't mean let you know all your heat go outside but certainly in sheds as well, sheds and stables, anything like that because it's incredible how many of these insects will actually crawl into uh, crevices and into roof spaces um, in the autumn to uh, actually hibernate as the adult form of these insects, of course, the butterfly. And they will stay there, wings closed, in a nice quiet corner, um, in a loft space or anywhere like that, uh, until temperatures obviously warm up and they start to uh, become a little bit sort of flustered and think, right, that's it. Spring's here, I've got to get on. And of course the males will be looking to mate and the females the same as well. So they'll be looking to escape. So quite often, if you ever see a butterfly, a small tortoiseshell peacock or anything uh, of that nature in your house or greenhouse flapping, bashing against the window, um, obviously at this time of year, February, March time, then please do let it out because it will be desperate to go and find some uh, food sources basically from what will have been a long winter hibernating. So it will be desperate to get some energy. And of course, it doesn't want to expend all that energy trying to just escape from a greenhouse. That's why I'm in my uh, little mini greenhouse in my back garden today, which uh, looks like it's been invaded by some ivy. Well, it has been invaded by some ivy. So <laughs> it needs a little bit of TLC, but uh, I've opened the, um, the door to the storage area and to my uh, the window on the side as well, just to make sure if there anything is anything in there, which I can't see. Um, and equally, it's a good point to make that in the autumn, you should do the same as well, you know, leave a few crevices open or doors slightly ajar on your shed and things, because of course, sheds are a great safe space for butterflies to actually hibernate over the winter time, usually in the roof, you'll see them. Uh, the peacocks are very, very dark, almost black. The small tortoiseshells are a bit more kind of, um, a brownie colour with their wings closed, uh, but easily distinguishable. And um, yes, I, I'll put a little couple of clips in, obviously, uh, so you can see the difference between the two. Um, 
earlier in the video so you will have already seen those but uh, they are quite remarkable little things and the peacocks interestingly enough have a, a great defense system because uh, one of the other places they often like to nest are in log piles and I did mention on one of my previous videos recently uh, the importance of log piles uh, for overwintering uh, creatures such as peacock and small tortoiseshell because they'll actually crawl into little crevices and sort of um, hibernate away through the winter months. Uh, but of course, they can be very often predated by uh, by mice in particular, is a big one where they get eaten a lot, um, and by other birds and things that might go in there in the winter time. Uh, but log stacks, obviously, mice is a big problem. So um, yes, it's best to uh, have these log stacks for them as a habitat, obviously. Uh, but as I say, leave a few doors open in the autumn and winter months. Uh, brimstones, funny enough, they prefer to hibernate in sort of ivy on trees, and I've got a really big. You can probably just see a um, sycamore tree down the bottom of the garden that's covered in ivy that no doubt houses a few of these insects each year where they sort of crawl into the ivy uh, and over winter, obviously, before emerging at the beginning of spring as these wonderful, wonderful insects. Um, so, yes, please, at this time of year, now again towards the end of February, I did actually see my first peacock butterfly flying yesterday and uh, it was great. A real surprise. I wasn't expecting it, but anything over sort of 10 degrees, you can expect to see butterflies. So... Uh, for the Lepidoptera of you out there, keep an eye out. They are starting to emerge down in the south of the country now. I've seen one or two people reporting on social media, obviously, just how many um, species they are seeing. Mostly small tortoiseshells at the moment, the odd peacock. And, of course, the red admiral is another one of our common species will be making its way north as we speak uh, from Africa. A lot of them are to uh, uh, come through Spain and France right up into the UK where they will, of course, start breeding from sort of April, May time. Absolutely love the Red Admiral, really iconic British species, of course. Um, and they will continue to fly north until they start heading back south, uh, where I actually witnessed um, a huge, huge migration in Croatia two or three years ago, where they were all heading south down uh, the Croatian coast. Just incredible, the wall brown, um, Red Admirals and Queen of Spain fertilities all heading south. I saw literally hundreds and hundreds of butterflies flying past me all day long. Absolutely phenomenal to see at the end of September. So if you're ever in Croatia on the coast at the end of September, I uh, strongly recommend you keep an eye out for them. Not that you can really miss them. Um, yes, they are a wonderful sight to be seen. And um, yes, I just wanted to uh, also today introduce you to my little helper Luna, one or two of you may have seen on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, then jump over there as well. I'm often posting pictures of the jobs I'm working on. Uh, I'm trying to do more posts as well on the YouTube channel. And um, I will be starting to do some shorts as well, just to see um, whether that takes off. That's the new thing apparently on YouTube. So I'm gonna be doing some shorts, which will just be little videos of what I'm doing, more of my daily kind of routine. I don't mean brushing my teeth and having my dinner. But <laughs> I've got to have some privacy. But I mean of my work life, obviously. So let's have a quick look. Luna, come. This is Luna. Hello. Luna is a Belgian Malinois. And um, she is eight months old now. Um, and she is absolutely loyal through and through. I wanted a dog that I could take with me to work um, that was going to, uh, yes, <laughs> be very good. Um, in uh, in a work environment and not run off and she is ridiculously <coughs> obedient and um very playful, <coughs> playful and bitey at the moment still but come on, come on. <laughs> she is a wonderful wonderful dog and um yes i uh, i am thoroughly thoroughly happy with this little friend dogs are our best friends aren't they after all uh, but, um yes thought i'd just show you introduce you to luna and she's um yeah, no doubt I will, she'll be featuring a few more videos once she's fully trained in the outside world. Shush, shush. And uh, yes, I will leave it there, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Um, keep your doors ajar is what I'll say for this video. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like and I'll be sure to be bringing you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. I've been bought a football, so I'd better go and play with her. I'll see you soon.